Welcome back to Hello China at Well 3.2 WCDFM. I'm Xin Yu. Starting from this program, Hello China will take on a new section, a weekly roundup about what happened in China. Our news presenter Rui Yao Sun is joining us now to talk about the news in China, and Sam is here to provide some analysis. Ah, thanks, Xin Yu. Hello, everybody. I'm delighted to join the Hello China group to co-host this upcoming weekly roundup. My intention of bringing this section is fairly simple.、Uh, I want to provide our audience with some useful real-time analysis about China. As we all know, China is currently the second largest economy in the world with a lot of business opportunities. So, as a thriving yet emerging market, it is also experiencing continual social changes and reforms. I think many of our listeners are interested in China and may even have their business ties with the country. So it can be beneficial to them if we do a roundup and present some of our analysis about what is going on there. I hope this section can prove helpful for our followers to get a more comprehensive picture about the modern China. Thanks, Rayao. If you have any comments about this section, you are more than welcome to contact us via email or just drop us a line on Facebook. So, Rayao, what news do we have about China today?、Uh, I think in the first program, I will present the most significant events happened earlier this month. So first, we'll take a brief review of the plenary session of China's National People's Congress, which finished its annual session last week. Next, we focus on the Japanese nuclear crisis and its impact on China. We will also discuss China's stand on the situation in Libya. Cool. Well, the National People's Congress holds a meeting every spring. Um, what are some of the messages this year? Do you know about this Rayao? Yes, the National People's Congress is China's state legislative body, and it convokes each year in early March. During the two weeks, three thousand deputies examine government reports, adopt the budget, and they also vote some on some critical bills. Uh, during this year's session, the representatives also completed another task. They drew up the 12th five-year plan for the country.、Uh, to explain a little bit, the Chinese government works out an economic plan similar to the national development plan we have here in Ireland every five years. And in China, these plans are much more than simply political gestures. They are seriously implemented by the government ministries and the local authorities. So, therefore, I can see these are general guiding plans for the whole country. The most eye-catching aspect of this newly adopted plan is the economic growth rate.、Uh, the Chinese government has adjusted the target annual growth in GDP downward to a modest seven percent. Yeah. yeah, exactly,、mm-hmm. which、uh, caused some、uh, concern in the market.、Uh, yeah, it's bec- a, it's a hot topic、uh, in the last week. Everybody was talking about it. Yeah, because you know、uh, the new target is significantly lower than the 10% that China achieved in the past decade. Yeah, and it reflects the intention of the Chinese government to have the growth rate too slow. In explanation to this, Premier Wen Jiabao commented, "We will never seek economic growth rate and big size at the price of the environment. That would result in unsustainable growth." And industrial overcapacity, and intensive resource consumption as well. So, according to the new plan, China will shift from the pursuit of rapid economic expansion towards a more sustainable growth development directive with better quality and more emphasis on the service industry. Yeah.、Uh, if this plan is carried out properly. It would transform China from the global low-cost factory into a major consumer market. The surge in consumption demand would stimulate imports and narrow the trade deficit between China and the major economies like the eurozone. Good, very informative, Rui Yao. Sam, do you want to make any comments on this? Yeah, thanks.、Um, firstly, I think that the new five-year plan shows a very mature and well-timed shift in priorities for the Chinese government, in line with their tendency to plan for the long term.、Um, the more the, the goals of the Chinese government to achieve more modest、uh, growth rates reflects two realities. The, the first is that the penetration of basic goods has already reached a very high level as people get higher incomes. And leaves less room now for the hyper-fast growth that we've seen in the past decade. Second is that low income is no longer a government priority. Premier Wen also mentioned the need to achieve income equality, tackle corruption at all levels, and foster innovative spirit among the citizens. 
Uh, some economists have argued that um, these comments further suggest money, money, monetary tightening, uh, more regulations on the real estate market in particular, and uh, the possibility for real evaluation towards a stronger UN. Uh, Mr. Wen said that gains will be gradual, but currency flexibility will be increased and that appreciation benefits the economy. And I have to say I agree. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Is there any other thing worth noting during the conference meeting, Riyal? Well, uh, yeah, a major focus of the delegates this year is inflation. Uh, despite the government efforts, China's consumer price index in February rose 4.9 percent year on year, and it is for the second straight month that inflation gets well above. Government's target of four、mm-hmm. percent. This is the figure released by the National Bureau of Statistics during the session. In the meantime, China's producer price index, measuring inflation pressure in the pipeline, rose seven point two percent from a year earlier. Output growth surged to twelve percent. Premier Wen Jiabao pledged to make combating inflation the government's top. Priority this year, without sacrificing fast growth and strong employment, that is critical to maintaining social stability. During a press conference, he also stated implicitly that the quantitative easing adopted by the Federal Reserve is pushing up global commodity prices and is leading to a worldwide inflation. However, he reconfirmed the media that China will succeed in controlling inflation. Thanks again, Ray Yao. Would you like to make any comments on that,、um, Sam? Yeah, well, I think in particular、uh, in relation to the figures mentioned,、uh, a lot of common、uh, economists have commented that the January and February statistics can be misleading due to the spike in consumption that Chinese New Year brings about. Um, this would partly explain the surge in the price index in February. Having、mm-hmm. said that, the 4.9 percent figure fell short of market consensus, and growth in the CPI may moderate later this year. But for the moment. International pressure is likely to strengthen in the coming weeks. The, the full impact also of the oil shock is yet to reveal itself, as the government has been holding back in raising the retail prices,、um, a practice that they are known for doing.、Um, also, the second round of QE is ongoing in the United States, and in general, if the government can manage to curb food and property price hikes, inflation shouldn't get out of control in China. But it will be an ongoing effort to keep it down. Thanks, Sam and Riyal. I hope the Chinese efforts can bring substantial rewards. For the past couple of days, the whole world was watching the nuclear crisis in Japan anxiously. What are some of the implications on China? To be honest, there was some degree of panic among Chinese citizens when the explosion at、uh, Fukushima nuclear power plant broke out and radiation level increased. The officials. While paying condolences to their Japanese counterparts, quickly moved to reassure the public that the incident is highly unlikely to cause health problems in China, and they were also supported by the sources from Tokyo and the U.S. Department of the State. Despite this, a few people still seem to be worried about the situation. But to the business world, the m- more critical news is that China has decided to suspend approval of nuclear plants. Following a meeting on Japan's nuclear incident chaired by Premier Wen Jiabao, the State Council declared that they will suspend approvals of new plants, including those in their pre-development phase, until a nuclear safety plan is approved. And the urgency and importance of nuclear safety must be fully understood. The statement also outlined steps to. That would be taken to ensure the safety of China's nuclear reactors, including immediate inspections of all operating reactors, and also、uh, tightening supervision, drafting new safety initiatives, and so on.、Mm-hmm. So, China is currently the biggest builder of reactors around the world, accounting for nearly 40 percent of the world's planned reactors. On the resources side. China has been the major driver of the global uranium market, and re- is regarded as a key source of future demand. The Chinese government has placed nuclear power at the heart of its future energy plan to reduce reliance on fossil fuels. Nuclear stations are expected to generate five percent of the country's electricity by 2020. Well, they contribute they contribute less than two percent today. Even though there is no clue that to suggest that this ambitious goal is under review, the statement marks a U-turn in official policy. 
just a few days before this, the director of China's Energy Bureau was reiterating his commitment to nuclear power. Now the new guidelines are enough to cause the industry more concerns. If the suspension delays the construction of new plants, a lot of international companies in the supply chain will feel the impact on their operating performance. Good, Rayao. We'd also like to hear your voice, Sam. Do you have anything to say about this? Yeah, well, I think there might be a tendency at the moment to、uh, exaggerate the effect of the suspension. I mean, China does still have 27 reactors under construction, with plans for 50 more.、Uh, according to industry specialists, about 40 percent of these are second-generation models, and these are the ones that may be impacted by any changes. However, third-generation reactors, these are seen as being as safer and less likely to be、uh, affected by any changes. Um, personally, I don't think the Chinese people need to worry about nuclear plants on their homeland. China is less prone to earthquakes than Japan. I mean,、yeah. the, the closest area of coastline、uh, of Chinese coastline to the area or the site of the earthquake is over a thousand kilometers away. Yeah.、Um, and if the and Chinese reactors are are set on more safer coastal regions as volatile. Now, if the nuclear boom continues and construction were to move inland, where geological settings can be more volatile, it could be a potential threat. But if that does happen, we'll probably witness the emergence of anti-reactor groups,、uh, like we have in Ireland, and that can cause a real disruption to the to the industry, which is probably what industry analysts are looking out for right now. Yeah.、Um, This could be a real issue. I mean, to some extent, East Asian countries like Japan and China have to resort to nuclear power to meet their growing energy demand. The shipping of oil takes、uh, a long time from the Middle East, and the volatile geopolitical situation there is a real threat to Asian economies. Also, for China geopolitically, because the United States controls the Pacific, if an energy grab were to be made, they're in a very poor position to defend their interests. So, nuclear power is, in many ways, their only option, and considerably safer than than its reputation would have people believe. I think.、Mm-hmm. Thanks a lot, Sam. So,、um, how are the situations in Libya this week? The United Nations imposed a no-fly zone on Libya, and what was the Chinese reaction?、Mm, uh, the United States,、uh, the United Nations Security Council, passed a resolution number nineteen seventy-three by one vote to impose a new f- no-fly zone and protect civilians in Libya. The resolution demands an immediate ceasefire, ceasefire in Libya, including an end to attacks on civilians, which it said might constitute crimes against humanity. The Council authorized member states to take all necessary measures to defend the resolution, but ruled out a foreign oc- occupation of any form in Libya. China, along with Brazil, Germany, India. And Russia were the five that had abstained on the resolution.、Mm-hmm. The representative of China and Russian Federation, when explaining their abstentions, prioritized peaceful means in resolving the conflict and said that many questions had not been answered in regard to provisions of the resolution. China had not blocked the action with a veto in consideration of the wishes of the Arab League and the African Union, according to Representative Li Baodong, who also acts as the rotating president of the Security Council this month.、Uh, when discussing the situation in Libya, Chinese representative said that、uh, the continuing deterioration of the situation in Libya was of great concern to China. However, the United Nations Charter must be respected, and the current crisis must be ended through peaceful means. China was always against the use of force, 